welcome back everybody today we're looking at another episode of star made news we're looking at an official release today of star made 0.18 it's a new universe everybody so let's take a look at some of these updates first of all hello and welcome to star made the big update is finished make sure you choose to back up when updating just in case the galaxy update this had a long time coming and is now finally here it will switch to the new system once you reset your world so you can use your old world as long as you please but a reset is recommended please make sure to export all the sectors you need for the new universe galaxies a galaxy in star made contains of 128 by 128 by 128 systems each containing 16 by 16 by 16 sectors this means the galaxy is pretty huge however not a system not every system actually has something viable in it most of the galaxy is composed of so-called void systems note that in the future the pirate spawning will get ramped up even more the farther you where you go from claim territory also claim territory will make that system safe and decrease pirate spawning in the surrounding systems that's not in yet Mo one of the most uh, uh, sorry the most common viable system is a stellar system a stellar system can have different variation of stars in different sizes and they can even be a binary system with two stars in one system note the damage rates and distances on stars depend on color and size blue stars are more intense and do more damage on a longer range Giants have eight sun sectors in the system, uh, and binary star systems count distance from the nearest star. The view distance of the galactic entities has been increased by a great deal, so you can now see planets and stars or other objects in your, of your surrounding systems. It might look a little overcrowded, a little crowded with planets in the old universe, but gives you an idea on how much planets there were. <laughs> Earlier we were looking at that actually, and um, there was like 50 of them all in the sky. <laughs> and you won't get that with the new gen also the stars in the background now represent the exact galaxy you're in so you can get a feel of where you are but of course there are a lot of other galaxies you can visit and every one of them has a different look to it although they for all follow a basic pattern you can also find black holes in the galaxy they form a wormhole network which warp warps you if you go into one the network goes from the inner galaxy to the outer arms and the furthest wormhole leads back to the closest to the center that means if you get lost you can always find your way back to the center if you follow the wormholes <laughs> in the map there are arrows on lines which you can see on the map and they have an indication of the line getting whiter in the direction of the destination systems stellar systems also generate differently from the old universe every system now has a generated name too which players will be able to change in a future update each stellar system has a random amount of orbits within the sectors that are intersected by those orbits certain things will spawn on the orbit planets a planet will spawn somewhere with on the orbit and there is a very small chance of a second one the other type of orbit are asteroid belts on asteroid belts a high amount of asteroids will spawn everywhere else there is only a small chance of finding them and if they spawn they do it in much less amounts keep in mind that a claimed system with faction points gets you a six times bonus uh, bonus to mining the new galaxy map since all of those things are not easy to navigate there is now a galaxy map if you press p it's available to all players it not only shows you the complete galaxy with all its systems they also show planets and stations in each sector that's open to change with the introduction of radar in the future you can see all faction territory in the map so you can easily find your way around on a server you also see ftl connections in the map colors for faction warp gates will be added later you can also now easily plot a path for a waypoint within the map. There are several filter options available which should be relatively self-explanatory, like bending out orbits, objects, etc., as well as the changing and uh, the colour of territory to a per-relation colour instead of a random colour per faction. Faction points! Most of the information in this system uh, section was in the last news, so if you want to go back and check the last episode, there will be a link below and in the description, and obviously on the playlist for the news features. Okay, we're going to go through these sim things again. Please remember that everything in the faction system is exposed in a config for admins to change. Config faction config.xml in the data folder. That config doesn't distribute yet, it's in the next update, so please... Uh, only try changing it in single player for now. Faction points. Faction points are a new form of currency in Star Maid and shall be abbreviated FP from here on out. They are shared throughout the faction and in the future can be made physical for reasons I'll go into later. Their value cannot be compared to credits and resources as their total availability doesn't follow the principle of an infinite universe like credits and resources do. Their existence, as the name says, depends on the factions of a server. So, on a server with more players, the overall faction point count will naturally be higher. But the demand is also rising with that. How do you get faction points? 
A server now does hourly calculations. I'll call this a turn from now on. At the end of the turn, the following will happen. You get 50 faction points for every online member of your faction. You get 20 faction points for every active online member of your faction. We'll cover activity in a second. You get zero points for every inactive member. A member activity counts as active if the member has spent at least 10 minutes playing within 48 hours. 48 hours after log off, members will become inactive and the faction no longer gets any points from his membership. There are several methods in place to combat farming with multiple nicks on the same server. Claiming territory. One of the biggest things with faction points is the ability for factions to take territory. You can take a whole 16 by 16 by 16 sectors at once. These are known as systems as mentioned above, or before, or previously, or in the last news post. Or if you go onto the news and read it. Taking a sector can be done easily with a faction module on a station or planet. If someone else has already taken the system, the faction module has to be destroyed before another faction can take the system. Territory has the following advantages. Your faction gets a mining bonus in that system of six times. Other factions still get three times so be alert of eventual thieves. Your faction gets a notice whenever a player enters your territory. You even get a faction news post if that player is an enemy. No names are transmitted though so you still have to go there with a scanning capable ship to check out the location. Scanning range. We'll see scanning in a minute. Bearing in mind guys if you saw the previous news then you won't have to uh, read on with this. We don't. Just, I think this is m mostly a repeat for now. Uh, faction point spending and loss. Of course you can't just go and claim every system as fast as possible as you like. You also have have expenses at each point at a turn. The following are the costs explained. Each own system costs 10 points per turn per turn. Each own system costs points in the distance in systems it is from the home base or a random owned system when no home base exists. Each system costs each own system costs faction points in the distance it is from a galaxy center. Something that will be more clear with the structure update. Uh, it, ah, that's been done now. Yep. So from the galaxy center, which is zero zero zero, still I believe. Um, the cost for the center distance will de decrease the more to total territory is taken. This means factions will probably move together a bit. Roaming vagabonds are still a thing since they don't use too much points. First system is free. However, they don't have the luxury of a bigger base of course. There is a flat expense of one faction point. Uh, loss from player deaths. Faction point loss from player deaths. Each player death costs a fixed faction point amount. Each player death costs also a faction point amount times the amount of members in the faction. That means while you get more faction points each turn with a bigger faction, you lose more when someone gets killed. Suicide does not count in that regard. Admin commands are in place to allow admins to protect players against faction point loss that will be broadcasted on death to players to avoid abuse. Making sectors safe against faction point loss. So if you want to have a mini game where you're going to die a lot, there's going to be a command that will stop you from losing your faction points. There you go. After dying, the player gets a 30 minute protection of losing faction points again. So no camping to, to get loads of repercussions uh, for too few faction points. Should at the end of a turn faction points of a faction be below zero, the faction will lose the system that's farthest from the home base, random if there is none. You can also not take any territory if your faction has below zero points. Home base danger. There is an admin option in the server.cfg. I believe it's not currently working yet, but we'll go through it. If a faction has below zero and no territory, then a home base becomes attackable. Server have the option of uh, the faction point config set to a flat FP expense every round. This will make it possible that completely inactive factions will get attackable eventually. Done. Moving on to scanners. So scanners, this is a new block you can put on your ship or station. Its mechanics work similar to the jump drive as it needs to be charged up to do a scan. Unlike the jump drive, the scanner will automatically charge. You're also only allowed one scanner per structure. Basic range of the scanners is fixed but also depend on the territory you're in. The recharge time depends on how many blocks you place, of course costing more power. Textures are of course made by the great Koopu Tom. Default scan range is 4 sector radius. If in an allied territory you get twice the default scan as do the owners, 8 sector radius. The owners of a system additionally get the whole system scanned. If you scan an enemy territory your scan is halved, 2 sector radius. If you scan an owned system you always get the location of the station that has the faction module owning it. This means with good strategy and infrastructure as soon as your faction gets signal of someone intruding you can send a player with a scanner ship into that system which can find out the exact position. Scans are a snapshot so to track moving targets you need a very good recharge. Scans are also persistent so you always even after logging in and out again have access to the last five scans you made. Future uses for faction points 
In the future, faction points will be the main currency for diplomacy and missions. The only way to earn additional faction points is to do missions, but also factions themselves can issue missions. A faction can pay faction points for the bounty on the head of another player, or for a mission taker getting them in an amount of resources, and many more. Faction points will also be usable to replenish asteroids in a system. GUI. Because nobody else would remember all the rules and keep track. The GUI has been expanded with several statistic functions regarding faction points and scans. Just click faction point button with the faction tab and it will tell you exactly how much you've gained and lost listed per type. It also gives you an over overview of all your own systems. You can access your scan in your navigational panel. Sitting. The great Omni. Keaton has made some nice sitting animations for Dave. You can now sit on blocks and wedges. Just press O to, on a block to do so. Your sitting position depends on how close you press on an edge. You can also sit on ceilings, etc. if you have gravity to do so. Database size. An upgrade has been made to how fast the StarMade database grows. More than 70% reduction in growth has been achieved by not saving planets and generated stations in the database as long as no block is modified. This change was always delayed by planets being generated too slow. Planets generation speed. Planets can now generate up to four times faster. On top of that, they now use full power of multi-threading. Some planets could not use until now since they need a huge amount of data and parts to send them on uh, to depend on other parts. So yeah, they're faster. Admin commands. Besides a lot of new admin commands for the faction point system such as setting faction points, protection against faction point loss on death and even protecting a sector so no one dying and it will lose faction points, server admin management has been added. Admins can now allow or disallow admin commands by admin and command. This should help server super admins to manage their admins much better and reduce admin abuse. This can be done on admin file directly if you need to do a lot of it. Make sure to disallow other admins to use the allow disallow command themselves or they can grant themselves the rights to use anything. Default sector size. A default sector size has been up two line two times the default it was before. This value will only apply if you either remove the server.cfg or change the value yourself. Do a fresh install, of course. Uh, or do a fresh install, of course. Balance changes. Calbiri has been hard at work on getting the game rebalanced further. The power usage of tertiary effects has been reduced to make it more manageable on ships. We are not going to allow a good for all ship, so block counts keep the same. Also, there have been several changes to other weapons and support systems. As always, this is not final, and you also have the option to modify the configuration yourself if you disagree with what the balance should be. Support beams are also being worked on to make them better fit into the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Other changes. This post is unfortunately too long to mention and a lot of the other smaller changes. Station contest winners. Thank you all for voting. The winners are in the respective threats, so head over to the StarMade doc to have a look there. They're not included, as there will be another post to announce. And bug fixes. Okay, so yeah, that was an episode of StarMade News. Thanks ever so much for watching, everybody. Um, I've got a lineup to host now, so thanks again, and we'll see you all next time.